Well, greetings to my church family and to anybody who happens along onto our YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. And so I, uh, I'm going to start uh, this devotional in, uh, in Romans chapter 8. That's a, a favorite chapter of Scripture to a lot of Christians that I've known over the years. Uh, there is a, there's a lot of encouragement there and a lot of, of explanation of grace that's going on in Romans 8. So when I hear people talk about liking the book of Romans, it's usually not long after they make that comment that Romans 8 or Romans 12 uh, are brought up. But in, in Romans 8, uh, there's the section that says more than conquerors. And I'm kind of a continuation, maybe to some degree, of this morning's message uh, at the Hornwall Church of Christ that, that uh, you know, Paul in 2 Timothy talks about being abandoned, about feeling betrayed or just feeling alone to some degree. And uh, he kind of mentions a couple of people in uh, 2 Timothy 1 who used to be with him and then have deserted him. And, that, uh, and so he mentions somebody that was, was very good to him. But then uh, he makes this comment that everyone in Asia has deserted me. And so um, I know that, that, that there are times in our lives where we can feel alone. And it, it's easy to do. But in Romans 8, uh, that same author, Paul, writes in beginning in verse 31, What shall we say then in regard or in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. And uh, continuing on, verses 34 and 35, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, who is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Verse 37, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, church, some encouraging words there that close out Romans chapter 8. It's no mystery as to why, uh, as to why this is encouraging to so many brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I know it is to me that nothing separates us from God's love. And so that no matter how alone we feel at times, that, uh, that God is always with us. As a matter of fact, I, I look back into the Hebrew Scriptures and the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and she will call him Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel simply means... God with us. And so we need to just remember that God is always with us. That there is, that there is no time uh, that God's Spirit is not present within us. Uh, that God the Father knows exactly what we're doing, exactly what we're experiencing. Now, I know that some people... Uh, might say, oh, I don't know if I want that much oversight. I don't know if I want someone knowing everything that I do. Well, that's the reality. God knows. But, uh, but God loves us. And so that is so comforting to me that God is always with us. I look in uh, Matthew 27, and that's the final scripture I'm going to look at in our time together today. 
But uh, in Matthew 27, beginning with verse 11, uh, this is when Jesus is uh, before Pilate. And so he has been accused by the Jews and they have arranged for him to be handed over to the, to the local Roman governor. And so he's being accused. And, uh, and Jesus makes it very clear that, uh, that, that he's not going to force himself on anyone. That, that people simply choose, that they get to choose who he is in, in their life. Uh, is he someone they've merely heard about, or are they going to choose to proclaim him as the son of God? And so, uh, verse 11 of Matthew 27, Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. And so uh, Jesus ultimately says there, uh, you know, Ultimately, I am whoever you say I am. That, in other words, you get to decide. And so that's, that's what he's saying to us. He's saying that we get to decide who Jesus is. And so I want God with me. Uh, I want this, this divine power, this righteous judge, uh, this creator that is fair. I want him on my side. And so in Romans 8, where it says that nothing can separate us from the love of God, I take comfort in that. Uh, I take comfort in this name, Emmanuel, that means God with us. I take comfort in a Savior who says, you don't have to accept me, but I'm inviting you to. And so the choice is ours then. Is, you know, are we going to make Jesus... Uh, someone that we've heard of, someone that we've worshipped for a time and then stepped away from. I mean, New Testament, uh, Jesus' own teachings make it clear that, that there are going to be some who do that. They accept him for a little while, but their faith is just not such that, that, uh, that there's a firm foundation there. And so Jesus says that it's up to us. We're the ones who get to decide who he is in our life. And so I encourage you to make Jesus uh, not just your Savior, uh, because that cheapens who Jesus is. To say, I accept this gift of eternal life, but I encourage you to make Jesus the Lord of your life, because God is with us. I invite you to pray with me. Holy Father, please forgive us when we sell you short and when we sell Jesus short. Forgive us for accepting the gift of grace and accepting Jesus as a Savior who atoned for our sins, but failing to live in such a way, to make our priorities in such a way that people know that Jesus is Lord of our life. And Father, help us to live, in, to live just that way, that people will know that we are Christians that we bear the name of Christ because Jesus is Lord of our life. Thank you, God, for being with us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless each of you the week ahead.